Back here as our coverage continues, about two minutes out. It's always uh, the neat thing, you know, had a nice little conversation. Can't tell all the good stories, but <laughs> we had a nice little conversation. We're taking a break, and one of the things uh, when you are covering this along the way, you get to meet a lot of great people who have a great passion like we do for basketball, and then you meet the same kind of deal when you do football, but it's a little bit more personal because football, you come and go. It's one game a week, and there's a ton of games, and you have tournaments like this, and you see the coaching staff and people, and right now, you know, riding high, the Canton Little Giants, and again, a lot of, again, attention is being drawn to Canton, and, and it should be. A lot of work has been put in, kind of turn things around, and each of these different programs going through the same process, you know, and that's one of the neat things to see all the uh, pride that a lot of these uh, parents, fans come out and turn out for a great tournament like this, and Macomb does it upright. Now, this is the 71st year. Been able to be over here since I was in high school back in the 70s, and uh, it, it hasn't really changed. You know, you, oh. when you look at it, a lot of the different committee people uh, either have uh, passed and uh, some of the great friendships over there, but again, it's always kind of neat to have a conversation uh, in the downtime, you know, and that's one of the things, and Bob's chuckling that, uh, you know, it's one of the things that when you when you take a look at that, I mean, again, you get a cross-section of people who only see each other really this once time of year. Yeah. And you just kind of pick up your conversation where you kind of left off last yeah. year. It's a three-day reunion, and, <laughs> you know, it, it takes all shapes and sizes to make the world go round. And when you come into a facility like this, for a tournament like this, it's the same aspect, you know. I absolutely love coming here and just talking to all the guys. And, you know, the funny thing is you can talk about anything you want to. What do we always talk about? <laughs> Basketball. Yeah. I mean, they could talk about the world problems and everything like that, but it's a, it's a neat kind of scenario and very proud to be a part of that fraternity called high school basketball here in the state of Illinois. Looking at the starting lineups tonight, it'll be for Advanced Rehab Sports Medicine in Canton, 649-1572 for a free entry screen. They fix sports injuries. Tonight, starting lineup, first of all for Illini West, they will go with uh, Kennedy Gooding. He'll be a 6'4 uh, junior. Also, Connor Artman, a guard, 5'9". Also a start for them. As we take a look at that, uh, again, we have uh, Gooding there just introduced. Connor Artman, Jackson Porter, 6'1", and a junior, number 12. Also, you got Chase Granger, six-foot senior, and Brady Atkinson, six-four and a senior. For Illini West, their coach is Bill Rasmussen. And at the end, there are the Chargers out of the West Central North Division. For Illini Bluffs, they come in with Clay Vass in his fourth season as a head coach. Steve Schaefer, Jake Vass are the assistants. Dust saw the former, again, athletic director, former Canton Little Giant standout, Steve Bishop. And uh, that's another thing. You get people coming out of the woodworks. You have success in playing over here in this tournament. Lineup will go with Brock Bauer. Also, again, for, again, Lani Bluffs, sophomore, is Cam Scott, junior, Braden Cox, Taylor Bruniga. In the matchup here, and also a junior, it is Jason Alexander. All the points scored by Bruniga have been 30 plus. He's in how many categories out of the top 10, four? Or at least uh, some of the different, I mean. Points scored, points average scored, per game. Average, average. I mean, free throws yeah. per game, made and attempted. But that's one of the things in voting for the MVP. A lot of folks will probably vote for him, but we see a little different, oh. again, perspective with our own, uh, again, the player for the Canton Little Giants and, and, and Cooper Smith. He's drawn a lot of attention, and, both of them, and I think it's going to be a very close ballot. And I think it's down to those two. You know, I think yeah. Nick Real will probably get some, some consideration from Pittsfield because he's averaged double figures per game, but I think those two will have the biggest impact for their teams tonight. So it's uh, Brock Bauer starting out the uh, Tigers of Illini Bluffs with a three. Middle. Just into the opening first uh, quarter here. First of three games on championship night here. They'll extend it out to that zone. Chase, and again, want? deflection. Again, the uh, Chargers of Illini. Again, with the Chargers. Again, have the possession. Defended by IB. We'll just go maybe... Chargers and the Tigers. That's a lot with the line eye. Too many every time. Too many line eyes. 724 in the baseline. Jumpers no good. Off the mark there by Gooding. Now the pack comes. IB Tigers. They cross the timeline. Brock Bauer pushes it. 
Off to dribble, Alexander. Cam Scott open right at the top of the circle. Rimmed it out, no good. Atkinson with the rebound for the Chargers. Deck down in their white, trimmed in orange. The size advantage in the West have all been three-point attempts. So it's Bauer with the three. People tend to get after the third night a little more lazier, you're saying, or something like that, that they they just want to take the long shots. Less dribble, two yeah. more. Lob it off to this near side. That's Porter. Now they put the ball on the floor. Again, zone on the perimeter there. Bauer and Alexander. Atkinson picks it off the short hop. Opposite side, whips it on the perimeter. Three That's ball, off. way off the mark, no good. Again, Artman. And again, throw away by Alani West. Down to four and again, IV. You can tell it's a bit sloppy. You know, after you've had a little bit of break, man, you have to get back out there. That's why in your warm-ups, you need to work a little hard. You know, You'll work up a nice little sweat. These kids are probably wore out. You know, this is game number four in three days, too. We get to this point here, and again, it's at college floor. It's always a lot different. 6-18. Bowers three by IB. That's the lead so far against the Illini Central. They attack off the left side. But again, skip pass and looking over the defense. Bauer. And Alexander, lazy pass out there. I'm surprised that no. Alexander didn't jump out there. Can you take a look at, again, Lanai West. Can't the Little Giants beat them, 55-52. And again, on the uh, loser's bracket side, it was, again, uh, after the Canton Little Giants defeated them. And again, they won the opening round. They beat Lanai Central, 67-55. And so that's a couple of wins by Alani West. They come in at 7-4. Off the elbow, the right side, shot is no good. After the miss, ball, fray, and a tie-up right at midcourt. Everybody just a little sloppier play, trying to get their bearings. That's what you fear, you know, after having set around and you watch, you kind of stretch out. They have a little rec room around here that you can lounge, those type of things. People probably went and got something to eat in between, stretch yeah, the legs. You're already tired. It's hard to get them legs yep. moving and get back into game shape. 538, same goes for both of us as uh, well. Yeah. It's, a, it's a tough one mentally. It's that mind over matter. Opposite side, a three ball is good by Porter. So both teams have connected on long range threes. 521, Lonnie West, Lonnie Bluffs. Tie three apiece. This is for fifth and sixth place honors. Taylor Bruniga turns, spins through traffic. Man, I tell you what, big time play by Bruniga. You know, miss him when he goes around. Yeah, he does. Five to three. Strong taken to the rack here for the Tigers. They lead it five to three. Atkinson catches it off the opposite side of the lane. See what they do against that zone. Back out front. Yeah, that a, is uh, Artman. It's a 1-3-1 one, one yep. from Lana Wolf. Yep, they've switched out yeah. of it. They get another long tray. Jackson Porter feeling it early. He's got a pair of trays. Six to five. The legs, my legs are fine. Again, Cam Scott, Alexander in the trees. Nice little left-handed push shot. Jason Alexander with the offensive board. Seven to six in favor of IB. Coverage here on WBYS on this championship night. 418, lob it, far corner. I don't know why he was throwing it there because there's not a lot of room in that far deep corner here. And by the coach's expression, yeah. he feels the exact same way. <laughs> Drew Davis. If there's ever a place not to throw the basketball, That's that would one of them. There's a hero today, Drew Davis. Again, the big pass from Cam Scott threw it right over the shoulder of the defender, and he had just about a half a court to dribble and for the layup as time run out. It's a pretty play though. It was 68-66 as Alani Bluffs got a key win over Rockridge today. Out front, that's uh, Porter. Drive along the baseline, drew some contact. Skip pass, opposite side of the floor to Artman. Back in the lane, nice little high low look through the ball away. Turn over Alani West is there first. Off the baseline, same shot, but this time he had a little contention for it. And a putback is up and good by Bring Cox. Same area we took the layup to win the game earlier today, but that was contested this time. Nine to six now. Tigers lead the Chargers. Opposite side of the floor. Looks over the defense. They got Artman. Quick touch pass and a steal. Another turnover by Alani West, their second. Off the baseline, now it's bounce pass. Davis 
Brunica. No way to fight it. He fights for it. Still fighting for it. Then he's going to get personal foul. Took it a little bit too deep off the baseline there, Bob. He was behind the basket a little ways there. It wasn't the best pass to him. You know, I want to hit one for the layup and that, take your chances. Or get it back to quick touch here and get reset. Right. You, you let, you know, Taylor try and go for an offensive rebound. 9-6. <laughs> IB will play the D. Walk it up. It's Connor Artman. Opposite side. Coach Bill Rasmussen. Near corner here. Quick touch by Artman. Down low, you had Atkinson wide open. They haven't really gone to him a lot as I thought they might in this tournament. On the perimeter, swings it to the opposite side. Good ball movement, and it goes three. He's living right. Three threes by Jackson Porter, and it's a 9-9 tie. Drew Davis missed the shot this time. Bruniga over the back, and Taylor's going to pick up his second. Two quick fouls. He's had, you know, certain games, not specifically do I know, he's had a lot and he waves to the coach as he walks by, saying, I'm all right, I'm all right. I don't need a sub. <laughs> 2.43, like he was really going to think about taking him out. Probably. He might. He might. Yeah, he is. Coming to the scores table here. Nine apiece, 2.34. Gets that zone. They kind of switch out of it. You know, one, two, 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 three zone. They vary from it. Rebound and picked up out of there. That was by Granger. Three ball opposite side, no good. Swatted away, defensively. That was uh, Brayden Cox, interior. That's going to be a foul against uh, Cox. That's his first. And a third as a team. And it'll send Clayton Granger to the free throw line. Couple of trays by Lanai West. That's her scoring so far in this action. He had a free throw, he knocks it down. The familiar thing here along press row, along the scores table area, people know you, they will tap you on the head, push you in the back, <laughs> do something. That's, it's the, that's kind of the acknowledgement it's the here. Norm. Right? They know we're working. Couple of, again, uh, missed, made them both. yeah, made them both. Yeah. And again here, 11 to nine, 216. Long three, Brock Bauer. He's you got two threes. You leave him open, he's gonna yep. shoot it. 210. He's got a long range, nice little touch too. Two minute mark here in the opening period. Out front, Bruniga plays the D on that perimeter of the zone. Chaser is Bauer and Cox. The ball knocked out of bounds. Substitution, there we go. Coming in is Kennedy Gooding. He'll replace uh, Atkinson. Atkinson will have a sit, and it'll interchange bodies here, keep fresh legs. Long ways to go in this game, minute 53. Inbounds comes to the opposite side of the floor. Good cover up defensively by Bauer. Leaves Porter open, ball and a steal. Turnover by Lanai West, that's their third. Tigers with the possession, a minute 42. Opposite side of the floor, rimmed it out, no good. That was taken by Teal. Missed oh. opportunity by Lanai Bluffs. You got to was rushed a little bit. 12-11. Again, it's Lanai Bluffs with that one-point lead down the lane. Shot was partially blocked. Good job defensively by Cox. Substitution to the scores table. Jacob Bryan. Usually a sixth, seventh man. Not usually the first or second guy off the bench for the Chargers. He checks in here with a minute 23. Walking it up the court, Cam Scott. Not as quite a surprise we saw him earlier in the tournament, though. No, you think, Bob? <laughs> this term will take a little bit out of you. It will. Minute 10. Some nights you're in a bracket, you may have a late night, or you may have an early morning here. Three to this near side, too strong, and then we got a hold underneath. Oh. We'll see which way we go here. Might be on Marino. Yeah. It's going to be against uh, Chase Granger. I thought they were going to come running over the back. Yeah. Boy, that was close. First and first as a team. 102 left in this period. Reverses it. Brock Bauer swings the pass. Cam Scott open for a three. And he knocked it down. Good dribble penetration inside by Bauer. Kicked it out to Scott. And in stride, man, he knocked it down. 15-11. Tigers with the advantage, 46 seconds. High post in the lane, bottled up there defensively. That zone really did a good job collapsing. Packing it in. Yep. Hartman now reverses to the opposite side. On the floor, 
with the possession, it's Granger. Chase with 31 seconds. They leave Artman open, too strong with a three. Cox beat the man of the rebound position with 23 seconds. Now he puts the brakes on. Bauer goes to the opposite side. High post is Teal. Cox opposite side of the lane to the right. And double team, you have Brunega. Two guys chasing Brunega right now. 11 seconds between the circle. Taylor takes it off the dribble and down the lane. That's going to be a blocking foul. I think they're pretty, I think, again. And they're going to tee up the coach. I don't think that was necessary. No. That's not a tee. But they give it to him, it's didn't okay they? okay to show emotion. Gee yep. whiz. They had a blocking foul. And that was a, a judgment call that he thought yep. was wrong. So Gooding commits the blocking foul. And then the bench for Illini West gets yeah. the technical. He just jumped up and down. He, he thought it should have went the yeah, other way. Here's the thing that a lot of folks don't realize. He has to yeah. sit yeah. the rest of the game. So free throw is good. Guess who's at the free throw line? Yeah, Runiga. What has he done in the tournament? Uh, make free throws. <laughs> make free throws, that's for sure. And a boatload of them. 18 of 19, 13 of 14, 23 of 27. That's a, and the winner time. is? <laughs> and Bruniga. It's like lottery numbers. And he gets the opportunity to shoot the uh, technical after the personal one. So it's six seconds. It's big, a huge swing for them. A, that's oh, exactly what I was going to say, too. Big time. Got them all down. And they keep the basketball with six seconds left. 19-11. So it's again a huge swing here. 19-11 with six seconds. So inbound on the opposite side of the court. Get a final play of this uh, period. Back out front, they'll settle with it. Teal with four, opposite side Bauer. He drives with three. Long the baseline, but they count it. Take a little move off the left side. Wow. And they reward him with the shot. He actually got fouled, and then he took the shot. That was a little thought-provoking there as well. <laughs> so foul, and Bauer gets the field goal and the free throw, and that's the way it comes to an end. Again, 8 nothing finish to that period. 22-11, Lanai Bluffs with the lead. We head to the second period. Back here in one minute. Helping underwrite this event, Sedgwick Funeral Homes with locations in Bartonville, Farmington, and in Canton. Remax Traders Unlimited, Susie McMillan, your real estate agent. Spoon River Animal Clinic, located on the north edge of Canton. Stereo Village, located on 4th Avenue in Canton. Wesley United Methodist Church, located on Avenue A in Canton and M. Bixler Video Productions. Helping bring you this event, Monocle's Pizza, located on North 5th Avenue in Canton. In Canton, we deliver by the Bank of Farmington, located in both Canton and in Farmington, by Canton Napa, with a location of North 1st Avenue, Big Horse Vineyard, located east of Lewistown, by Canton Lambs of God Daycare and Preschool on North Avenue A, and by M. Bixler Video Productions. The uh, free throws and, and everything that kind of finished was a 6 nothing, but it ended up being a 10 nothing finish to that particular part of the period, and it's an 11-point lead now. Second period's underway. I.B. fights for it on the floor. Teal, and he raises up, and they call it an over and back. It's hard to see where that line is. You see the black part here near the scores table, but the rest of the floor, Bob, it's hard to see it is. where the actual middle part is. It's an over and back. Turnover number three. For IB. Chargers will inbound. With the basketball, it's Porter. Had the hot hand. He had the three trays. Added a couple of free throws. That's her scoring. Free throw line jumper and comes up short. No good by Granger. Again, a tip in. And I think, I didn't get to see who was the uh, tip in there. I'll find out. 22-13, 7-29. Tip in the opposite side, and no good by Cox. Ball goes out of bounds. Hey, Bill. Bill. Hey, Bill. Bill, who got the tip in down there? Who was the tip in down there? Who was the tip in down there by? 
Back here at 723, trying to get a clarification on the opposite side. Bounce pass, Jason Alexander, a little head fake and a travel by Alani Bluffs. It's turnover number four. 717. And again here. And the tip in was by Gooding. Thank you, Bill. Tip in was by Kennedy Gooding, so it's 22-13. Opposite end of the floor, shot no good. That was taken by Jacob Bryan after the miss. Yeah, a good look at the basket. Minute gone by in the second period. Here from McComb. Opposite side of the floor, kick out to Bauer. He's covered up defensively, and it's a Quint foul on the low block area. That should be on Bryan. Yeah. First against Brian. That's going to be his second. Sometimes I have to look up. When you do, this is game 11. I don't know. Uh, something like that. I have to look up to make sure which period I'm talking about. That's, for us, this is game number, I think, 11. <laughs> That's my exact point here. I have to look up make sure. Bauer. Oh. Wow. Barry, he's had the hot hand in this game, man. Big three in this uh, second period. And he's got 12. Three trays, 6.38. I know Papa Steve would like to see the way he's shooting like this. Here comes Bruniga, and they get a layup for the finish with the basket. 27-13. Well, it was 22-11. On a run. At the end of that first period, Gooding had the uh, tip in, and that's been it offensively for Illini West. Get a quick start here. Opposite side, good hustle. And that's just it, the Atlanta yeah. West squad is diving for loose balls, trying to get all the extra possessions they can. Drew Davis. Sometimes losses are the best remedy in certain things. Right. Oh, I totally you, agree. Then you follow up with the dynamic win that they had today. That can really energize you, and it has certainly in this and game. playing right? strong for the yeah. fifth and sixth place. Six-minute mark here. Second period. Again, opposite side, and they leave Porter open, and he continues to stroke it from three. That's his fourth tray, 27-16. Got 12 or 16. <laughs> He's stroking it from long range, the opposite side of the floor. Brock Bauer, he tried to answer, he rimmed it out, no good. Nice looking shot, the opposite side. 27-16, IB falls back on defense with 531. Underneath Atkinson, he got clobbered. Oh, yeah, and they called it. I thought he got him pretty good. But no call. That was Drew Davis with the block. Yeah. See, I've seen times when that's called a simple thing, but full timeout coming up. Along with MBIX or video production, WBYS coverage from McCombs Holiday Tournament. 529. 27-16 at Fiverlani Bluffs of Illini West. Back in a minute. Helping underwrite this event, Sedgwick Funeral Homes with locations in Bartonville, Farmington, and in Canton. Remax Traders Unlimited, Susie McMillan, your real estate agent. Spoon River Animal Clinic, located on the north edge of Canton. Stereo Village, located on 4th Avenue in Canton. Wesley United Methodist Church, located on Avenue A in Canton, and M. Bixler Video Productions. Helping bring you this event, Monocle's Pizza, located on North 5th Avenue in Canton. In Canton, we deliver by the Bank of Farmington, located in both Canton and in Farmington, by Canton Napa, with a location of North 1st Avenue, Big Horse Vineyard, located east of Lewistown, by Canton Lambs of God Daycare and Preschool on North Avenue A, and by M. Bixler Video Productions. Timeout taken here courtside from McComb. Inbounds will come for the Illini West, 7-4, and four, heading through this tournament. They'll be a force to reckon with. They get a nice little nucleus. They do. Yep. Top of the key, guard oriented. Little bump in the lane, and again, he just tosses up scoop shot Porter. Knocked out of bounds to become Illini Bluffs way. And he had really no, he didn't really know, he didn't really believe he was going to make it. I, I know that. He was trying to get fouled, and that's not the case. 5'11", Braden Cox back in with a sub, and he replaces Jason Alexander. Bruniga right in front of us. Yeah, carries double team everywhere he goes, this man. This is crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much... 
And again, long three by Cam Scott, and it goes in. I think, I think it's a lot to sacrifice just for one player. It is. Couple of trays by Cam Scott. 30-16, they extend the yes. lead up by 14. You want to watch a gimmick defense, I mean, this is one to watch. Yeah. 30-16. Far side, three is no good by Porter. Tracked down underneath, the layup shot was blocked, and a foul. She was less contact in that one, but they called a foul. And the Granger. Cox. Yeah, they were one of the two, Cox or Bruni. Yeah, yep, I know. Both of them are standing about the same area. So Cox picks up his second. Bruniga has two. And we'll find a lot west to the free throw line. That's Clayton Granger. Missed the first one. He's uh, two out of three in this game. Still to come, a third place game. West Hancock Farmington at eight. Then Canton. And also coming up in the nightcap, Canton takes on Pittsfield with 4.30. I never manufactured, never been able to, and underneath there, Atkinson was going to attempt the shot block, and again, missed opportunity by Drew Davis. He's right there, too. He was riding high today, but he's missed a couple of shots yes. since that time. <laughs> It'll break this game, will humble you. Yeah, really quick. 4.10. And again into the poster. Good job by Cox. Hook shot by Atkinson. Goes off the glass and makes it to and, two points by Atkinson. And that's not the easiest angle in the world no, to take not. either. 30-19, Braden Cox with a three. Yeah, everybody's feeling the outside shot. And in this game so far, I believe that's seven trays by IB. 33-19 with 344. Again to the opposite side of the floor with 340. Down the lane, pull up jumper, swatted away. By Cox, fights for it. Atkinson tipped it. And again, a shot off this left side by Chase Granger. Not much of a contact, but enough to warrant the foul. And again, the foul was given to, uh, again, Drew Davis. Yes, yeah. it was. i never seen the official really come over here. So a couple of uh, players at the scores table will check in. Again, Chase Granger. He had Clayton there a minute ago. Being one out of two. Sinks the free throw. Another one coming up. Again, Bauer returns and Jason Alexander. That's the two returning for IB. They're Ben Shawley down the opposite end with uh, Clay Vass and his staff. Again, who was the first people we saw coming in when we arrived this morning uh, for the 10.30 game? It was Lanai Bus Bus. <laughs> so it's a long day for everybody involved in this championship day. Hey, man, when it's all over, they pee out here like the Blue Angels. <laughs> so will we. We will. 3.30. Hopefully we'll be smiling all the way home. And I might sleep till about noon tomorrow. 33-21, Bauer opposite side. It's good. I tell you what, he's got the nice little stroke going tonight. Four trays. Wow. It's a bit of a shot put type delivery, but it's nothing than that one. 15 by Brock Bauer. Again, it's 3:06. Outlet it comes. Cam Scott takes it, shovels a pass outside. Brock Bauer again in and out, no good. Taylor Bruniga had the ball stripped away from him. He goes out of bounds. Everybody was almost anticipating that Bauer's shot was going to go in. He yeah, kind of backed off a little bit. Reacting towards the other yeah. end. Bruniga, Cam Scott to this near side. In and out, no good. Bruniga, 32, I think. We'll see. Either that or Alexander. Both of them. No. Oh. Kennedy Gooding. Wow. Goes the other way. I think he him with a push. Yep. Gooding with a push. That's his second. 251. 36-21, Alani Bluffs in lead. Braden Cox, three balls no good. You see any players more, anymore, and nobody's really shy from shooting threes, are they? Yeah. They get a chance, they're gonna light it up. Let's see in game number two of the day. 2.30, and then a hell ball. Jump Should be ball. a jump ball. Good nice, call. Nice play by Brock Bauer. Yep, good defensive. It's one of his best games. You know, we have seen him, He's he is dealing with some knee issues. He's yeah. been battling through that. But He's, again, today he just looks more comfortable he's shooting. He's showing flashes today. Yeah. This is the most consistent yeah. game. That's what, you know, they're looking out of him. He's a junior. 
This will be a confidence builder. This is the good thing about this tournament. It can do a lot of different things for you. It can make you or break you. It, it does. Down the lane. Off balance shot. One-handed shot by Artman. That's like his first that two points. Plays. First two of the game. 36-23. Cam Scott got away with the carry. Underneath Bruniga wide open. First time he again got loose to the shadow. Those two defensive players. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ten points in the game. 207. Back out front. Quick touch. Goes to the hands of Artman. Two minute mark here. Eight o'clock game. West Hancock, Farmington, and then Canton, Pittsfield. Wow, it, we're looking forward to that. Next two games. To turn over it's five for Lana West. All right. Here in the action of this fifth, sixth place game with a minute 43 remaining. Clean the circle. Cox, everybody's taking threes in this game. How many attempts we look at here, Bob? And that's that's ten, number nine of his quarter for Lionel Bluffs. And again, they connected on four in this period. Yep, three and, in the first. And three in the first. And again, 38-23 with a minute 35. They'll walk it up. Bauer will meet him near the timeline. That's Artman. Double team. Now he gets it off his shoulder. Almost pinned it there. Out front, that's Porter. On the exchange, who they have in the lineup as well, Caden Kirken, who comes in. Lost a handle on it, Gooding. Race that's sets off the side, way short. That's Ball is tipped. tipped. Yep. Outlet, Bruniga, and he stepped on the end line, or they're saying a push. And a foul against Bruniga. That's three. He flat ran over the guy on the opposite side of the floor. I was looking more up uh, for the court here. But to see that other player, he ran flat over him. Gonna That's going to be the now. third against Bruniga. With this lead, they're lucky they have a little bit of sizable lead in this stretch. And we're nearing halftime with 109. IB will play D. 38-23, they have the lead. Off the dribble with 103. Out front goes to the hands of Hartman. Looking over the defense by the Tigers. Camp Scott jumps out there on the switch. Travel. Yeah, it's a travel by Illini West. It's six turnovers. So six. You now we start out the opening day and, you know, again throughout the stretch of three games. And you look up and behold, and again we're in game 24 here. And it's, it's amazing. And then when you go through all the whole process. And you feel it. <laughs> There's no way around and it. And your voice you takes the penalty. It, it, takes, it takes the uh, brunt of everything. Opposite side, Cam Scott, what else would he shoot but a three? Cam Scott with a tray. That's her eighth tray. That's his third. 41-23, 25 seconds. They don't want to get beat up, man, driving down the lane, doing all this stuff. They want to play it safe by shooting the three. Ball kicked out of bounds with 17.7. Get a decent little crowd here for the fifth, sixth place game. That'll continue to build as we get late in the evening here lob it out to the right side pull up jumper rimmed it out no good that was taken by Granger and a foul underneath could be against Teal so two coming up free throws three four that's uh, Alexander all right and seventh as a team and the free throw line will be Jackson Porter Got the first one. All right, first one goes down. They've been uh, pretty good. Only one miss in the action. That was by Clayton Granger. He was three for four. Another opportunity coming up from Jackson Porter. Roll both those in. 14 on the night. He has four trays. 41-25. Uh, Six seconds opposite side. Bauer sets a screen. Sure. Shot was blocked. They were trying to get the shot there by Reese Shear, and it was tipped. That's the way the half comes to a close. Alani Bluffs, 41. Alani West, 25. Halfway through, first of three games in the championship round here from Macomb. Up next, it's the halftime show. It's brought to you by Monocle's Pizza, home of the family pleaser. And I remind you, Monocle's will be closed uh, New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. Monocle's halftime show when we return while with MBIX or video production on WBYS. 
Back in two minutes. Helping underwrite this event, Sedgwick Funeral Homes with locations in Bartonville, Farmington, and in Canton. Remax Traders Unlimited, Susie McMillan, your real estate agent. Spoon River Animal Clinic, located on the north edge of Canton. Stereo Village, located on 4th Avenue in Canton. Wesley United Methodist Church, located on Avenue A in Canton. And M. Bixler Video Productions. Maybe he's really focused. Hey, Michael. Michael. Maybe he likes spinning the wheels. Maybe he just loves trucks. Maybe he's just being a boy. Preoccupation with objects is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. The sooner it's diagnosed, the better. Helping bring you this event, Monocle's Pizza, located on North 5th Avenue in Canton. In Canton, we deliver by the Bank of Farmington, located in both Canton and in Farmington, by Canton Napa, with a location of North 1st Avenue, Big Horse Vineyard, located east of Lewistown, by Canton Lambs of God Daycare and Preschool on North Avenue A, and by M. Bixler Video Productions. Michael Adams? Here. Michael Adams? Here. <laughs> Michael Adams? Here! Michael Adams? Students who miss 18 days of school in any grade risk falling behind and not graduating. Absences add up. Keep track at boostattendance.org today. Tours uh, coverage tonight that continues on this championship night. If you've been through us uh, throughout the last three days, we really appreciate uh, being a part of our coverage here. And on this, a final night. And we hope that everybody has a great and a safe New Year's Eve. That's coming up this weekend, and of course, we change into 2017. Been a tough season, a lot of different uh, passings, and uh, my memory of my dad, it's one of those special ones. He always gave me the opportunity to play sports when I was younger, and to be able to kind of live my dream, and uh, always be thankful for, for being able to have that a part of my life, and uh, how much it means to Bob and I to have been able to do this for 16 years, and coverage this is one of our favorite venues one of our favorite things to be a part of here coming to the Macomb Holiday Basketball Tournament and do uh, you have the likes of uh, Dan Rouse and you have a few other folks that over the number of years that we've been able to be become friends with and again some of those have no longer around and uh, Adrian McMahon is another one I think one of the first guys that I ever had an opportunity to really come over and over the number of years he was so good to us and always took care of us we have always asked if we needed anything or big part of it and lo and behold he was actually a longtime friend of my dad he was an insurance adjuster so he and my dad crossed paths for a number of years when my dad was working at the body shop of uh, art and jeans for a number of years ago and those are the kind of the weird things that do happen you know that, that you have those things cross-sect your life and then lo and behold a guy that my dad had a lot of respect for and each other had and then they end up meeting here and then different things down the line but again that's what it's all about and the sportsmanship we're able to share here it's being shared in the 71st annual Macomb Monday basketball tournament one team that will be uh, leaving Illini Sutton will be living in Jacksonville will be the new entry next season and really didn't know by covering this all the many years Bob and one of the things is that uh, there is a wedding list there has been for several years of teams wanting to get into this this is a pretty prestigious one for again with the exception of Canton one of the larger schools most of the other teams again have a lot of prestige 1A 2A now or it used to be the class A teams a lot of teams who come out of here one time or another have won state championships or have made a return trip. We got a couple of teams from a year ago uh, be a part of that, Rock Ridge and Liberty. And uh, just the tradition, we have a team that's waiting in the wings with uh, West Central. Again, Nava Calusa used to be with Reno Pinkston. Farmington has had their number of trips, so a lot of that history is being shared 
as we kind of think about it here in the Macomb Holiday Basketball Tournament. There's a lot of teams, you know, over the years that have advanced, you know, to make a trip to Brinson Harbor home for the state finals. And, you know, it's interesting the Lana Central is going to depart and, and, and not return. And, you know, here comes Jacksonville in. And, you know, everybody's going to say, well, what do you know about Jacksonville? The funny thing is, is their current coach now was here before with the final former team in Pleasant Plains, Cliff Cameron. <laughs> Yeah. So we're going to see him again. Yeah. And what does he do? He coaches. He wins. And what, what has he done? He won a championship. <laughs> yeah, so absolutely. It, it might be with a different ball club, but the, the coaching philosophy is still there. And it's funny, those guys who, who get that significant win and, you know, kind of right up in the sun and say they're never going to return, nine times out of ten, they return. Absolutely. And I think that in that same year that they won a state championship basketball, they won baseball as well. They did. Was it uh, Dusty Bensko? Benko. Bensko. Yeah. I think it's right? Benko, I think. Ben Benko, right? Something yeah. like that, yeah. A number of years ago, so that was one of the things. So it, it, it's one of those things you can start conversation with everybody around here, and yeah. there's a lot of great history of a lot of teams that have uh, passed through here. So. Macomb's made a run. Yeah. Lewistown's made a yeah. run. Pittsfield won a state title. Pittsfield, Lion Eye Central. Yeah. I mean, so it's can, prestigious to get uh, the Kent Little Giants back in the title game against a longtime, really perennial power back in the 80s. Uh, Dave 90s. Bennett with uh, Pittsville. Yeah. Pittsville, yep. So that will be coming up. Let's take a look at the in-game stats. They're brought to you by Crawford's Home Furnishings. Experience quality selection, excellent customer service. Canton and Elmwood. First half stats. Here's Bob Wagner. Currently on for Lana West. They're 7 out of 24 in field goals. That's 29.2%. Four out of 12 in three-point shooting, 33.3%. Seven out of eight in free throws, 87.5%. 18 total rebounds, nine offensive, seven first-half turnovers. The Atlanta Bluffs Tigers, 14 out of 30 in field goals, 46.7%. Eight out of 19 in three-point shooting, 42.1%. Five for five in free throws. All of those in the first quarter. That's 100%. 13 total rebounds. Five offensive. Five total turnovers. Largest lead in this game was 18. 16 right now with a lead of 41-25. Score tied twice and lead changed four times in this fifth and sixth place game. Scoring for Illini Bluffs. He had five points from Braden Cox. Ten by Taylor Bruniga. He is saddled with the... Uh, Three personal fouls, two points from Jason Alexander. Brock Bauer with 15 in that first half. He had four trays, nine by Cam Scott for their 41. And again, they had eight threes in that first half. Scoring for Illini West, they had uh, two points from Kennedy Gooding, two points from Chase Granger, two Brady Atkinson, two by Connor Artman, 14. Jackson Porter had the hot hand. He had three trays in the opening quarter. He had four in the first half. One by Caden Kirkham, two by Clayton Granger, and those are the scoring in this first half, 41-25. Halftime brought to you throughout the year by Monocle's Pizza. Back here in one minute. Helping underwrite this event, Sedgwick Funeral Homes with locations in Bartonville, Farmington, and in Canton. Remax Traders Unlimited, Susie McMillan, your real estate agent. Spoon River Animal Clinic, located on the north edge of Canton. Stereo Village, located on 4th Avenue in Canton. Wesley United Methodist Church, located on Avenue A in Canton. And M. Bixler Video Productions. Helping bring you this event, Monocle's Pizza, located on North 5th Avenue in Canton. In Canton, we deliver by the Bank of Farmington, located in both Canton and in Farmington. By Canton Napa, with a location of North 1st Avenue. Big Horse Vineyard, located east of Lewistown by Canton Lambs of God Daycare and Preschool on North Avenue A, and by M. Bixler Video Productions. Get a message again from family of, uh, again, Joe Coleman. He said, uh, looking at his MVP trophy 35 years ago. He grew up in the Ipeva area around the Mark Donor time period who also won an MVP. So had the local ties for MVP. We had one of the MVPs here earlier. That being uh, Jordan Fouts back in 2009. Last time Little Giants won a title here in Macomb. So lots of great history, lots of folks 
Again, it's always tied together from around this uh, farming area of the community. Is. Second half basketball. Love it. And a big thanks to Rhonda for sending that information. We hope Joe's doing well. And he's got to be since he's a Redskin fan, right? I'm not so, commenting on that. So many those are the <laughs> I didn't know football was still going on. <laughs> it's, it, 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 not very much for us, though. It's, <laughs> it's, win, it's dwindling down. Yeah, mine was over <laughs> months ago. <laughs> foul situation there. Connor Artman picks up the foul first of this half. We're underway here, 41-25. Again, a drive off the left side, no good by Brunigan. Taps it out, still fighting for it. He has such an ability. Taps it to himself quite a bit, doesn't he? Yeah. yeah I mean, he has just the ability to keep kind some, of keep moving some. up and down. He's always he's active. He's like he's on a pogo stick. He always, he's always keeping the ball active, just trying to tap to where he can get a hold of it. Hartman commits his second foul back to back to start this half. Two quick ones. Lob it underneath. It is a Brunigan. He just reeks, puts it up above the rim there, and he gets his 12th point. 43-25, it was just a slight lob in there. And he cut a jump, he didn't want to dunk it. 7.05, after he jumped about five times prior to that, I don't think he's probably got much spring in his leg. Down the lane, no call. Again, that was a gooding drive off the left side. Okay. Here comes Brunica. I thought he got act on the arm too. Opposite side, that's Braden Cox, puts the ball on the floor, drives through traffic, nice little curl and a shot there by Braden Cox. I think Braden Cox should do more of that. We have a lot of teams, I think by regional time, gonna be very dangerous teams. And uh, either one of these, especially Lanai Bluffs, I think is gonna There's a lot of tune it up. A lot of talent in this tournament. Yeah, there has been. 6.30, ball deflected, back out, opposite side. Chargers drive through the lane, put back is good by Atkinson. Atkinson with the offensive board. Their first two points of the half. Bruniga drives. From the top of the free throw line, soft touch. He has such a soft and unique ability to hang in the air and just has got that little soft roll off of the shot. He is a bona fide scoring machine. 47-27, will be anxious to see where he will end up committing. I mean, there's a lot of opportunities for him. And more still to come. Yep, there is. Six minute mark here. Bauer will walk it up for Illini Bluffs. At the hot hand of the first half for Trey's 15 points. Then a lot of isolation with the Brunigan this uh, second half. Alexander turns the corner. Cam Scott, opposite side, Brock Bauer. Cam Scott sets, push three. Good. And I'll tell you what, he has a quick release. Cam Scott, just a sophomore. That's his 12th point. He's got four trays. 50-27. What a difference in shooting. Normally they've been scoring a lot of free throws and points that way, Bob. But three point, that's one of the best games I think I've seen him shoot the ball from the three point area. 50-27, 5-15, remaining in the third. And a quick pass zips out of bounds. Last touch by the Chargers. Here's a change, uh, Clayton Granger checks in. Again, the line I West. Again, we'll bring it up across the timeline. Hand of the hand to Porter. Swings it, opposite side to Artman. Quick touch pass, covered up there by Bauer. Quick on his feet out there, recovered. Find the five minute mark here. Porter wanted to shoot it, he was covered up. Good job by Lanai Bluss, finding where the shooter's gonna be. Down the lane, scoop shot, and roll. Puts a little backspin on it. Hey, quick. It was Connor Artman. He got a couple of field goals, 50-29. Underneath the Brunigan, the basket counts. He got bumped from behind. Brunigan with the field goal. Got 16. Way below his tournament average <laughs> so far. Well, this is the first game he didn't sit. It's yeah, yeah. Again, they go to the free throw line where he was four for four early. And he got a three-point play. 17 in the game, 53-29. 4.32 remaining in the third period. Long the baseline, a little too strong with that move. Loose ball on the floor, shoveled up shot, no good. Out of the pack comes Lonnie Bluffs, and Gooding got on that passing, they deflected it, or they had an easy bucket. 
Go the opposite end, substitution. Turnover Coming in the lineup, Jacob Bryan. Eight for Lana Wolves. Again, our call of the game still to come. We have third and fourth place, West Hancock and Farmington, then Canton and Pittsfield. Should be interesting matchups, you know. After playing one game earlier today, you're going to see uh, who can hold up the longest, come off the finales. With the 4-11 mark, catch this near side. That was a kick. <laughs> Caught in midair by Cam Scott. Chargers will keep it. Off to this near side. Cam Scott almost makes the steal. Wow. And a push three. Play at Jackson Porter. Had a big night tonight. That is his fifth three. He's got 17. Ball knocked away. IB with the turnover. Can and again, the Chargers with the carry. Turnover by Alani West. That's eight. As we get into the second half of basketball here. Cam Scott greets the official at midcourt. Ball was deflected. Wanted to throw it down the floor. Ill-advised throw away. Down the lane. Bank shot no good. Tap up no good. Off that left side by Porter. Out for three. It is Artman. Short on that one. He chases it down in the near corner. Double team through that. And again, lost a handle on it. Turnover by... Lonnie West. He gives him nine. So that's back to back by the Chargers. Cam Scott down the lane. Little scoop shot and a roll by Cam Scott. One of his better offensive games with 14 in this game. 55 32 with 313. Ball knocked right to us here at the scorer's table. Long press row. Again, inbound will come by Porter. Looking over the defense. They get it into the hands of uh, Brian, Jacob Bryan, opposite side for a three. Too strong. Keep it alive off the left wing. Left side of that baseline where they will begin the offense. Drives, kicks it out. Covered up as Gooding. Jump to the near side. Comes up to the near side. Short on the attempt. 55-32, 245 of the third. Across the timeline, Cam Scott looking over the defense by the Chargers. See how Bruniga can figure this one out. Brock Bauer. A lot of guys, again, during the offseason, AAU. I know that Brock Bauer played with a really a specific one out of the Indianapolis area. And the same pretty much with Taylor Bruniga. Plays some elite players. You could tell it really, for Taylor, it really elevated his game. You know, I think it, he saw that he had the potential to be able to compete at a higher level. He's definitely a, a more rounded offensive player. And you can see on the defensive end, he does a much better job as far as rebounding and getting position and still shows that ability to block shots. Braden Cox with a free throw. His eighth point of the game. Still another quarter to play, and then waiting. We have uh, West Hancock Farmington will be coming up at near 8 o'clock, and then 9.30 Canton Pittsfield. So ways to go before we get to that particular moment of the evening for game 26. Two-minute mark here of the third. 57-32, back out front. They'll launch a three, and it's good by Jackson Porter. He's had a great night tonight. Six threes, and he's got 20, 57-35 with 201. Timeout taken here from McComb by the Chargers. Back to McComb, fifth, sixth place game returns in 30 seconds. Helping underwrite this event, Sedgwick Funeral Homes with locations in Bartonville, Farmington, and in Canton. Remax Traders Unlimited, Susie McMillan, your real estate agent. Spoon River Animal Clinic, located on the north edge of Canton. Stereo Village, located on 4th Avenue in Canton. Wesley United Methodist Church, located on Avenue A in Canton. And M. Bixler Video Productions. It's been a game that has featured long range three balls in this game. Try to tabulate that again. We had uh, six, uh, I believe six, so far in the game by Porter for Alani West. And I believe it's uh, nine for Alani Bluffs. There's Brunigan with about a 15-footer. And Brunigan with the bucket. He adds to his totals. 
19 in the game by Taylor Bruniga. Gooding shot from three is no good. Bruniga wrestles away the rebound, looks from behind. Dribbles by it, bounce pass in fashion. Kicks it out to the near side. That's Davis missed it. Thought better of it, then falls in the floor. And that's gonna be a timeout taken by Illini West. Fell down with a minute 27. 59-35 in the third. Timeout in this fifth, sixth game place, and it's back in 30 seconds. Helping bring you this event, Monocle's Pizza, located on North 5th Avenue in Canton. In Canton, we deliver by the Bank of Farmington, located in both Canton and in Farmington, by Canton Napa, with a location of North 1st Avenue, Big Horse Vineyard, located east of Lewistown, by Canton Lambs of God Daycare and Preschool on North Avenue A, and by M. Bixler Video Productions. Back here with a uh, minute 24 clock runs. Folks are starting to fill the place here. Good uh, lot. Nice crowd here for championship round later tonight. Gooding adds to that three-point shooting. Everybody's getting in on the act tonight. Yeah, his ticket to the three-point party. Yeah. Seven threes in this game by Alani West. Minute mark here. Brock Bauer dishes it underneath. That is a teal shot was no good. Loose ball after they missed there. Granger comes up with it. 59-38. Lani Bluffs trying to get their 10th win of the year. A couple of losses on the year, though, have been to Farmington. Jumper off the right side, Jackson Porter. Does it the short range on that one. 22 in the game. 35 seconds here. Brock Bauer. Now the perimeter give and go to Bruniga. Looking for him to isolate here with 26 seconds. He'll back it out with a couple of dribbles. Now to Bauer. They drop Davis to far corner. High post is Teal. And Lance Crisp in the lineup and a blocking foul with 14 seconds. Jackson Porter commits the foul. It's his first. About the only thing he's done wrong in this game. Yep. Fifth team foul. Inbounds to Berenica with 13. Off the baseline. Bauer sent Chris for the far corner. High screen by Teal. High about three steps above the arc. And Taylor Berenica showing some fancy long range shooting. With the three by Lani Bluffs, they lead it 62 to 40. Lani Bluffs setting that fifth, sixth place game. We head to the fourth period back here in Macomb in one minute. Helping underwrite this event, Sedgwick Funeral Homes with locations in Bartonville, Farmington, and in Canton. Remax Traders Unlimited, Susie McMillan, your real estate agent. Spoon River Animal Clinic located on the north edge of Canton. Stereo Village located on 4th Avenue in Canton, Wesley United Methodist Church, located on Avenue A in Canton, and M. Bixler Video Productions. Helping bring you this event, Monocle's Pizza, located on North 5th Avenue in Canton. In Canton, we deliver by the Bank of Farmington, located in both Canton and in Farmington, by Canton Napa, with a location of North 1st Avenue, Big Horse Vineyard, located east of Lewistown, by Canton Lambs of God Daycare and Preschool on North Avenue A, and by M. Bixler Video Productions. Back here along with M. Bixler Video Production, WBYS's coverage, three days of this McCall Holiday Basketball Tournament. Fifth, sixth place game now, long range by Gooding, misses it. Three point shots in this game now. We got 10 by Illini Bluffs, 7 by Illini West. Long range shooting. I don't think any of the teams. That sometimes happens uh, in, again, the championship night here, usually in this fifth, sixth, sometimes in the third, fourth place games. 7.41, and it'll be Gooding's third foul. Again, Taylor Bruniga, short on the free throw attempt. Another one coming up. 22 by Taylor Bruniga. Bends at the knees and a senior knocks it down. 
definitely he and Cooper Smith will be definitely in the running for MVP in this 71st annual Macomb Basketball Tournament. Kick it to this near side, a quick touch off the dribble. Finds an opening, kicks out the opposite side, Gooding. Step back, three, and rimmed it no good. Rooney good with the rebound. Looks at it get across the timeline. Cox open to the left side. Bauer opposite side of the floor. He pulls up, takes a three, and nothing the net. <laughs> Makes it look pretty easy, doesn't he? Has he has no limits to his ability. Doesn't he remind you a lot of Ethan Happ, though? I mean, the, the ability. I don't know if he's quite as uh, efficient handling the basketball uh, as, as Ethan was. He's a little slender, too, compared to Ethan's. Yeah. Physic, more physical frame. 7.03. 66 to 40 here. Bauer will walk it up for the Tigers. Trying to close out a nice little run in this first part of the season for Illini Bluffs. Cam Scott lobs it and overthrown it off the fingertips. Turnover by Illini Bluffs. And again here at the 6.50 mark. Backcourt uh, for again in the action here. Taking a look, they do have uh, Jonah Burt who's in the lineup for them. Burt wears number three. Missed opportunity there by the Chargers. There comes Brock Bauer, 6.33 left. Bauer out front there, beats Burt. Braden Cox, Cam Scott offensively. And to the near side, Lance Crisp. Little different look, ball thrown in traffic there. And we had a hold. That's gonna stop play here. I think it's on 23, it is. Against Chase Granger. It's gonna be his second. Another one coming up for Braden Cox. Just about everybody's got some big numbers for this Illini Bluffs offense tonight. Again, Cox, free throws good. That's what they do, Leon. Their success is scoring points. And then a lot of teams have limited them really to field goals in this, you know, in this tournament. They've kind of survived by free throws. Again, Braden Cox knock, knocks down both of those. 68-40. Across the timeline, quick pass here from Artman. Long three is no good. Taking the opposite side of the floor by Jacob Bryan. One and done of the Chargers. 68-40 with six minutes left here. We'll have a little bit of break in between, but not a lot. We'll have a chance to stretch our legs a little bit. We'll have our post game, all that for you coming up. And then the third, fourth place game, West Hancock, Farmington. That's at eight o'clock, followed at 9.30 by the Little Giants against Pittsfield. Ball knocked away with 5.40. Drop the floor to the far side, knocked out of bounds. Again, Chargers will inbound, and that will be Granger. Again, Drew Davis will be the sub. You have these underlying themes, and Drew Davis definitely going to be one of those who was a hero today, got the winning layup. There's a bucket. Chase Granger with a field goal. 68-42. And he'll talk about the success of a player like Cater Bruniga who continues to add to his yeah. scoring tournament total in this one. So, well, he's got a repertoire when it comes to scoring <laughs> offensively. In the lane and rolled it up. And the basket will be good by Artman. I would say not much defense is being played right now by either of these teams. Nope. <laughs> Going with the motions. Twenty-eight by Bruniga. Of course, that is unofficial. Opportunity here for Lonnie West to score. And again, it's a three-point play. It's 5-11 left here. 70-45. Brock Bauer will have a good seat there and had a fine night here with 15 tonight. Boy, he was firing him up from long range tonight. Ended up with, again, a total of uh, four threes, 15 points. Five-minute mark, turnover by Lonnie Bluss. Here comes Burt off the right side, way off balance. Look out from behind, and then it's going to be a foul as Drew Davis was bumped from behind. 
You can tell a lot of the different folks here huffing and puffing and kind of working, trying to work their way through this little stretch here. Like us? <laughs> like, like us. <laughs> you ever feel like you're comatose? You're just kind of like, no. Um, on the way home. <laughs> on the way home. <laughs> That's why I'm going to get autopilot. Substitutions. Uh, Aiden Trout will be one of those uh, coming in the lineup. And as we mentioned, uh, who else we have out there? Caden Kirkham. And let's see who else we have out there. Brandon Butts. So that's a couple of uh, substitutions. Again here at the 451 mark. And as we mentioned, Drew Davis gets the first point of the game. His two biggest of his career will always be the layup this morning. And in and out, no good. 451. And they always ask, who is that? guy who made the pass. I can't wait to hear the story 20 years from now. <laughs> That'll be kind of neat, huh? Oh, yeah. 442. Might be elaborated out a little bit, too. Yeah, yeah. Out front with the Chargers. Basketball, it's uh, Caden Kirkham. Kicks it out to the opposite side for three, way short. These guys who haven't played a lot in this tournament trying to get their legs against a little different visual type of thing when shooting. Basket has the open areas here. It's a lot different. Open spaces to shoot. Ball kicked out of bounds. I believe it's off of Lanai West. Yep, I agree. 422. Again here from uh, McCombs Western Hall on day number three. Seat starting to become attached to me. Kind of feels like it's a part of me now. I'm not taking it home, though. It's not like you're in the car, then. <laughs> you can always sit on top. I don't think so. Coming up four minutes left here. National Lampoon vacation style. I call you Aunt Edna. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Opposite side. Crisp. Brunega. Oh. Head fake. He wanted to pull the trigger. Yep. Opposite side. Drew Davis on the exchange with four three a uh, 347 here going to run some time. And if you're Illini West, I don't think you're going to probably contest it a lot. 71-45. Three think, minutes left here. I think the outcome is a foregone conclusion. Yep. Back out front. Double team. Run again with the player. Player control. Run again. Commits the foul. It's his fourth. 328. 71-45. He just should have kept, should have kept uh, again the ball out front. Those things won't happen. 71-45. Full timeout. We continue fifth, sixth place game. Alani Bluss in front of this one. 71-45. Back in a minute. Helping underwrite this event, Sedgwick Funeral Homes with locations in Bartonville, Farmington, and in Canton. Remax Traders Unlimited. Susie McMillan, your real estate agent. Spoon River Animal Clinic, located on the north edge of Canton. Stereo Village, located on 4th Avenue in Canton. Wesley United Methodist Church, located on Avenue A in Canton. And M. Bixler Video Productions. Helping bring you this event, Monocle's Pizza, located on North 5th Avenue in Canton. In Canton, we deliver... By the Bank of Farmington, located in both Canton and in Farmington. By Canton Napa, with a location of North First Avenue. Big Horse Vineyard, located east of Lewistown. By Canton Lambs of God Daycare and Preschool on North Avenue A. And by M. Bixler Video Productions. Out front of the uh, possession, it goes to Bert. And a long one by Butts, tried to bank it, shot no good. They set that up for a play for him to take the shot, number 30. Missed it, rimmed it out, no good. Imagine you'll, you'll probably get another crack at it. Three minutes left here, between the circle. You always want to see more Butts. Yep. <laughs> Getting the head fake back out front. And a push for a three. There you go. Good on the release. Off the bench. And again, Reese Shear. He gets in on the act. We take a there look. You go. That was Corey Squire. Okay, right Squire. Got everybody checking into this game now. I'm put you to work. 
<laughs> Bring your paycheck for once. Again, here it's 234. Opposite side of the floor. With the possession, that's Teal. Cam Scott. Lob it underneath the catch, and a shot is up and good. Nice play there. Teal with the uh, bucket there. And again, two points. 76 47, 223. Getting some more folks in the lineup here for Alani Bluffs. See if we got all of these. I don't know if we have all of them. That's dressing. I think we do have. And let's see, we have. Uh, Jackson Sheckler. Sheckler checks yeah, in. 51. He's the one been with the uh, flu. 51 is Taryn Corey. All right. So Corey, mm. 51. Austin Dooley, 42. Okay. Yeah, he's in the lineup. Dooley with 42. And you said Reese Shear. The other yeah. one is. And let's see who else do we have in that lineup there for IB. Since we mentioned, mm. I think we got them all there. The end of the post turns and Butts shot was no good. Now the pack across the timeline. They also have out there, I believe it's a Reith Sondergroff. Oh, that's the other yeah. one. Yep, Sondergroff. Here's number 33. Two minutes left here. IB attacks off the right side between the circle. And a three ball near side, too strong. Maft to the miss. That was taken by Reese Shear again. Underneath. Bucks the line. And again, for two. Again, Reese Shearer with the foul. Now our post game will be a short one here for a broadcast. Minute 44. And again here with the free throw attempt. That'll be coming up. Brandon Butts. Again, he gets the free throw. Next one coming up, minute 44, 76-48. Coach Clay Vass clearing the bench, getting some more folks in. And in and out, no good. Minute 43 left in this one for the fifth sixth place honors. Across the timeline. That is a Sonde Groth, loose ball. They fight for it. Butts and a hell ball. Also out there, as we mentioned, Dooley with the tie up. Bet at 32. Now the inbounds will come off the left side. And again, Shear will inbound. Bounce pass into the post, covered up. Back out to Dooley. In the lane, a little runner, it's good. And again, Denver Deuce, number 22. So Deuce with the field goal for IB, three no good. Minute 15, another opportunity. They step back, three is no good. That was taken by Burt, Jacob Burt. 78-48. Again, a running clock here to tail end of this one here. That is, and Dooley gets credit with a field goal with a goal 10 and with a mercy rule running clock here. Last part of this game. 80 to 48 in favor of Illini Bluffs. And between the circle now with uh, Butts. Yeah, Burt, three no good. Off to this near side, it was taken by Trout. 33 seconds left here. Get to our post game, we'll have our brief look at our stats. Get ready for West Hancock and Farmington for third, fourth place. Opposite side with 20 seconds. Free throw jumpers no good, missed it. Again, the closing seconds here. Across the timeline. Launches a long three. Looks uh -huh. good. Banked it. No good. Back out front. Leans in. And he there. shoots that one and rimmed it out. No good. One A bluffs. 80. And 48 for Alani West. That's the final in this fifth sixth place contest. Honors go to Alani Bluffs. We'll wrap this one up, get to our post game. And again, one, 10 to four. 10 and four is a record. Got 28 by Bruniga. 80 to 48, our final. 
fifth and sixth place game belongs to Alani Bluffs. And they uh, get a final of 80 to 48. Post game is up next, brought to you by Big Rack Steakhouse on a North Main in Canton. Back here in two minutes. Helping underwrite this event, Sedgwick Funeral Homes, with locations in Bartonville, Farmington, and in Canton. Remax Traders Unlimited, Susie McMillan, your real estate agent. Spoon River Animal Clinic, located on the north edge of Canton. Stereo Village, located on 4th Avenue in Canton. Wesley United Methodist Church, located on Avenue A in Canton, and M. Bixler Video Productions. Maybe he's really focused. Hey, Michael. Michael. Maybe he likes spinning the wheels. Maybe he just loves trucks. Maybe he's just being a boy. Preoccupation with objects is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. The sooner it's diagnosed, the better. Helping bring you this event, Monocle's Pizza, located on North 5th Avenue in Canton. In Canton, we deliver by the Bank of Farmington, located in both Canton and in Farmington, by Canton Napa, with a location of North 1st Avenue, Big Horse Vineyard, located east of Lewistown, by Canton Lambs of God Daycare and Preschool on North Avenue A, and by M. Bixler Video Productions. Michael Adams? Here. Michael Adams? Here. <coughs> Michael Adams? Yeah! Michael Adams? Students who miss 18 days of school in any grade risk falling behind and not graduating. Absences add up. Keep track at boostattendance.org today. We get to the scoring. Those are brought to you by Crawford's Home Furnishings. Experience quality selection, excellent customer service. Canton and Elmwood. Let's get to the individual stats. Uh, Bobby, take a look at those uh, team stats. All right, Leon for Atlanta West. 16 of 57 in field goals, 28.1%. 7 for 29 in three-point shooting, 24.1%. 9 for 11 in free throws, 81.8%. 34 total rebounds, 19 offensive, 13 total turnovers. For Lana Bluffs Tigers, 28 of 51 in field goals, 54.9%. 12 out of 25 in three-point shooting, 48%. 12 out of 14 in free throws, 85.7%. 30 total rebounds, 7 offensive, 12 total turnovers. Scoring of the game, Alani Bluffs at 28. That's again Taylor Bruniga. Set attorney scoring record, eclipsing David McGinnis from Alani Central. And again, he eclipsed him as 129, finishing with 134 points. So again, Taylor Bruniga, the new scoring record holder here at the McComb Holiday Tournament. He finished with 28 tonight. 11 by Braden Cox. Two by Jackson, uh, Jason Alexander, 15 by Brock Bauer, 14 Cam Scott, three by Reese Shear, one by Drew Davis, two by Denver Deuce, two by Carson Teal, and two by Austin Dooley for their 80. Also scoring in the game, Alani West, uh, Kennedy, Ke uh, Kennedy Gooding at five points, four Chase Granger, four by Brady Atkinson, seven from Connor Artman, 22 by Jackson Porter, two by Corey Squire, three by Clayton Granger, and one by Brandon Butts, who they tried to get a three towards the end of the game there. But again, Lonnie Bluffs, the winner, 80, 48, and they move now uh, to a record of, again, 11 and four. Lonnie West at seven and five. That'll wrap up our broadcast for Ambixel Video Production. Up next, it's the third and fourth place game, West Hancock. Farmington, that's coming up next, followed by the title game at around 9.30. All right here. Thanks for joining us for the meantime. Back here in just a little bit from Macomb.